Calaroga Shark Media. Hello, I'm Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news. I'll talk about Neil Brennan's special in a second, but some good stuff from late night. Colbert said, now, if you told Stephen Colbert as a teenager that one day the president of the United States would be standing trial for paying off a porn star, that young man would say, you have porn? (laughs) Jimmy Fallon joked about the jury selection and said it asked questions like whether they believe in QAnon, use Truth Social or attempt Trump rallies. In other words, they want to know, are you Marjorie Taylor Greene? (laughs) Switching to health care, Kimmel, Trump believes that every woman should have the right to drive 600 miles for health care. Seth, President Biden attacked former President Trump over his stance on abortion, which Trump describes as don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> All right, that Neil Brennan special. Ooh, did you catch the bonus episode that I released on Tuesday night? I had a lot of things to say there about an unnamed special, but specific to Neil Brennan. Oh, I was so disappointed. Um, the material is good which is the shame of it all. I think possibly, perhaps, maybe it could be conceivably true that maybe somehow someone accidentally added a lot of laughter. Uh, After every single line he pauses, there's a huge laugh after every line. And I don't know about you, fellow human, you can't, as a human, you can't do that. You can't just constantly be like, bah, bah, bah. You have to let these specials breathe. I spoke my piece in the bonus episode uh, about an unnamed special. So check that one out. I I did a three minute rant on Tuesday night about that one, but I can add this to the top specials of 2024. And again, the material is there, but I don't know what's going on, guys. I don't know. Let me know what you think of it in the Facebook group, Daily Comedy News podcast group. Hip Hop DX says Dave Chappelle reportedly made some wise cracks about his longtime friend Kanye West and Kanye's wife, Bianca. They're sourcing a Reddit poster. Who says, I went to a Dave Chappelle show last night and he had multiple jokes directed at Ye throughout the night. He did say there's no beef between them. I'm going to have to really clean this next part up. Chappelle said he recently had dinner with Ye and Bianca, but said it was the most uncomfortable dinner he ever attended because Bianca was basically naked. He said it looked like she woke up and put some makeup on, slapped some duct tape on her upper body, cleaned that up, and shoved a cork up her area that you might shove a cork up and no not the first thing that came to mind the other thing that's more nasty so she shoved a cork up there and walked out the door thank you reddit user for that mental picture joe rogan and andrew schultz got a little political rogan spoke of the current president saying the idea that they're going to keep running him is just bananas you're going to keep him in there i can't believe that's real but as time goes on i'm starting to think they might actually keep running him schultz said i don't know why they would switch him out they're not in a position they can switch him out for anybody who steps in Rogan theorized he'd have to kick the bucket. Schultz suggested the Democrats would put Gavin Newsom in the place of Biden, asking Rogan if he thinks that's the scenario Democrats are secretly hoping for. Rogan went with it and said, May. I think Biden's got until May. I feel like right around May, they're going to pull him, Schultz said. And Newsom comes in. Rogan, I think he just has health problems and the country understands and Newsom is going to have his support fully. And Kamala is going to be like, I don't even want to be president. I'm cool with being vice president. Schultz, so Newsom runs with Kamala? Rogan, yeah, I think so. I don't think they can pull Kamala as long as they can keep her quiet. Schultz, none of us really believe he's making the decisions, right? He's just like a puppet for just to get lambasted when all these things happen and then he forgets about it immediately afterwards. Rogan said, yeah, he doesn't know. He's the perfect guy to blame for things. Conan O'Brien returned to The Tonight Show, currently hosted by Jimmy Fallon. Now, I forgot that The Tonight Show had moved back to New York City. Conan said, I haven't been in this building for such a long time and I haven't been on this floor. Uh, Fallon now using similar space to what Conan used for Late Night with Conan O'Brien. Conan said, flashbacks happen. I mean, I was here for 16 years doing the late night show before we went out to L.A. and right across the hall. All these memories came flooding back to me. Conan said the strangest part was seeing his old studio where the Kelly Clarkson show now shoots. Conan says the first thing that'll hit you, it'll hit you, too, because when you're 98, you'll move on and someone else will be in this chair. Conan took the high road and you should take the high road. And Conan told Jimmy Fallon, I want to say I'm just very happy for you. I've had the honor of meeting every Tonight Show host going back to Steve Allen. And I think what you've done with the show is beautiful. You've made it your own. You've done so much great quality work and I couldn't be happier for you. Pete Davidson also took the high road. He recently decided not to continue forward with Bupkis. An insider told TMZ that Pete has given, quote, hundreds of thousands of cash to the show's creators as a token of appreciation for their efforts. 
The source says he gave the money to just a handful of people who were involved with season one. The source added that people who were working on the now dead second season did not get any money. Veer Dawes had a fun encounter. Well, maybe not a fun encounter. It's fun for me as I sit in the basement, don't have to deal with this. Uh, Veer was in a hotel and uh, went to the bathroom and started doing the kind of thing you do in there. And there was a snake. <laughs> he tweeted, at an eco resort for the night because we're shooting nearby, needed to take a whiz. Open up the bathroom door, stood over the pot, stuff out, and before I began, a snake fell from the ceiling directly onto the water tank near the flush handle. I'm never peeing again. So after I bailed on Neil Brennan at the 17-minute mark because of reasons well discussed, I put on the Curb finale, even though I hadn't uh, caught up on the full season of Curb. Uh, it was okay. Not bad. Not amazing. I'm not going to ever think about it again. I kind of like Larry's F you to the universe that he redid the Seinfeld finale. It was okay. Darren Ravel, if you're on Twitter, you may know Darren. He tweets a lot about sports and said, After opening day, July 5th is the best-selling ticket day for the New York Yankees. Is it because they're playing the Red Sox? No, the Yankees say it's because they're giving out a George Costanza bobblehead. When I drove to Vermont the other day and back, I listened to a million podcasts. I forgot to mention one of them I listened to was Mark Marin with Tig Nataro. I had a bail on it. I just, I don't find Tig good company. I've had this reaction with her before when I listen to her on stuff. I enjoy her comedy, but I just wasn't feeling it, so I bailed. Allison Bree has shared an update on the Community movie. She says, we got a script. You heard it here first. I've read the script, and it's so funny. But then she said, I hope that Annie hasn't changed too much because I loved her just the way she was. Well, you read the script. Does Annie change or not? Been, what, 10 years now? I hope Annie changed. Tonight at the Moon Tower Comedy Festival, Darcy and Jer, they were super cool when I had them on the podcast about a year ago, 7 o'clock, Rachel Bloom at 7, Margaret Cho at 9.30, and Jeff Ross at 9.30. All right, so on the front end, I'd say let's go see Darcy and Jer because they were cool to me. On the back end, Margaret Cho's manager or agent or somebody associated with Margaret Cho insulted the hell out of me 20 years ago for telling me I was too stupid to give Margaret Cho a show on Sirius. That was not a good opener. That immediately made me go, you're never getting a show on Sirius now. Don't come at me like that, man. So I'm not going to go see Margaret Cho, hypothetically, if I were in Austin, which I'm not. I would go see Jeff Ross, which means good choice by me yesterday, not seeing Jeff Ross. So Jeff Ross for the late show. Darcy and Chair for the early show. Ooh, scrolling it down to tomorrow. Shane Gillis. All right. Shane hasn't been in the news. Let me throw him in Google, see if anything's up. Nope, nothing new. All right, let's see what's going on at Melbourne. Did you preload the website today, John? No. It is April 12th, a Friday night in Melbourne because of the way time zones work. How are we doing on time? Uh, a little short today. All right, let me find someone with clips for you. Michael Shafar's show is called Lots to Say. Time Out says he's a brand of comedian that is getting rarer and rarer to come by these days. And if you're among those who fear comedy's gotten too politically correct, this show will put those fears to rest. One of his clips has a big uh, lettering that says, any Nazis here? Let's listen. So I'm trying to be a better Jew. I don't perpetuate any Jewish stereotypes anymore. I don't pick up money from the ground anymore. <laughs> I don't do it. It's too risky. What if someone sees me? I'll be like, ah. Jew picking our money. I can yell it. It was my money. I dropped my money. <laughs> I was leaving Coles Balaclava the other day. This old lady comes up to me. She goes, to me, Excuse me, sir, is that yours? And there was a dollar coin on the ground. And I was like, <sighs> Nice try, bitch. And then just walked off. <laughs> Not falling for that one. Not falling for that. I don't want to perpetuate any Jewish stereotypes. Like if I'm watching the news on TV with a friend, I will never change the channel because I don't want him to think that I control the media. <laughs> but I never grew up with any Christian customs. I find Christian customs very strange. I said to a friend of mine who's Christian, I was like, isn't it weird that you guys cut down a tree? That's just a weird custom that you guys have. And he goes, well, don't you think it's weird to cut off a foreskin? <laughs> I was like, yeah, but we don't then hang the foreskin in the living room. <laughs> I mean, religious Jews do, but I'm pretty secular, so. He's fantastic. That was really good. Uh, his material's much better than the crowd reaction. Love him. He's Michael Shafar. If you want to head down to Melbourne, he's a QT Melbourne, 930. You should go. 
All right, let's try George Zacharopoulos, 2024 Greek Comedian of the Year, Greek in the Sheets. Reviews Hub gave it five stars, saying wicked sense of humor. One for review, five stars. This is an accomplished stand-up at quite a frenetic pace. Now, I've noticed a lot of the other reviews cite, like the Adelaide whatever, or what are the big newspapers. The Quintessential Review, Reviews Hub, and One for Review made me suspect that maybe, perhaps, possibly, George had to go digging for a good review. Haven't listened yet. I'm going to listen just as you are for the first time. Let's see in Melbourne uh, last year. I came on stage at this place. I said, hello guys, my name is George. I'm from Greece. This guy stood up and he went, mate, that is preposterous. Which for a heckle, it's pretty good. <laughs> I was on stage like a deer in headlights thinking preposterous. That's my cousin's name. All right. That's all he shared. He got a laugh because of his timing on the first one. He took that pause and then followed up with not an amazing line, but he got the laugh for timing. Okay. The preposterous is my cousin or whatever the joke was. This is a bit of a hack joke, right? But okay. Like if you went to see him tonight and you sat there, it was fun. It's not George Carlin in his prime, but it's fine. Let's do one more. This is Enriban Dasgupta. That show's called Polite Provocation. Film Companion says his astute sense of observation, crisp writing, and stage persona have made him stand out as a favorite no matter what country he performs in. Beat Magazine, four stars, calling him suave, smooth, and an international veteran. All right, let's listen. Hi. I'm very happy to be here because uh, the other option was being in India. Um, <laughs> I've been doing comedy in India for 10 years, uh, and now I have nothing to say. Um, <laughs> India is so funny already. How can you be funnier than India? It's impossible. One time I was doing a show in Mumbai, and on the way, I saw an ambulance crash into another ambulance. <laughs> Both patients went in a tuk-tuk. <laughs> to the symmetry. Um. <laughs> so it's uh, just good to be away for a while. Um. <laughs> I was uh, recently invited to perform uh, stand-up at a corporate event. And for some reason, they put me right after the motivational speaker. <laughs> so we just cancelled each other out. <laughs> he was like, you can win. And I was like, you have lost. He's really funny. And Nirvan Dasgupta, come to the States, man. That's the kind of comedy that would crush here. He, he needs to get up here. Like him a lot. Once a corporate hotshot, he's graced stages across India and the globe, smashing the prestigious Just for Laughs in Montreal and last year's Melbourne Comedy Festival, etc., etc. Yeah, dude, come to the States. All right, let's get on a high note. I loved him, and that's your comedy news for today. If you enjoy the program, tell a friend about it. They might like it, too. See you tomorrow.